Okay, we're ready to cut our lettering now. And with this type of lettering, it's called negative cutting because we're not cutting letters that we're going to glue on something. We're removing the letters. So they're negative area. And when cutting this type of scroll work, I think the best way to do it is to cut the inside curves first while the wood is stronger. And then we come and shave the outside. And the letters aren't going to come out in like perfect pieces. Like we won't be able to spell Rudolph when we're done cutting. It'll be all little scraps, but that's okay. That's how it's done. So we'll thread up the saw. And I'm going to start on this long inside curve. Now you can see I'm going very slow. I'll probably just talk as I do this. Because I'll have ideas as I'm doing things. What to talk about. I'm going very slow. Very little pressure. And as I turn, I lean toward the back of the blade a little bit. And this is why it's important that you have very little front to back movement on your saw because you want to be able to lean back on the piece without it jiggling around and jumping and the front teeth catch on things when it moves around. We'll come along and get the front of the air out of the way. And I think I'll keep going because there's an inside curve there. Now you can see I'm very relaxed. It's not jumping all over the place because the teeth are so small. It's very easy to make little pinpoint turns. We're going to cut off here because the drill hole is in there. And that piece will pop out, maybe. Nope, it hung on. Of course. Another part we are. Instead of going up and doing the back edge of the R, I'm going to break it off there, go back to the hole, try to get the pieces out, and I'm going to do the inside first, because it'll be too weak. And when I get close to this edge, I'm going to turn it a little, because that way it'll be easier to meet up with it without going through all the way. And this is why I like to cut my own pieces out, is because like a lot of times, if I feel it's too close, I'll adjust while I'm cutting now, and then I'll go back on the computer and pull the line a little, so it gives people a little more room and breathing room or whatever. You see when we turn into this, we're hardly putting any pressure, and it breaks off. Now that's how fast I cut. I'm not slowing down just for the video. They're very exacting little tedious pieces and if you try to go too fast you're going to cut too far and you'll be breaking things off. So the U is rather easy. And again we're going to do the inside curve first. Go up to the curve, back it up, and then I turn while I'm in the hole, the drill hole. Then do the other side of the curve, turn that, and I think I'll come around. I like these little curves on the pieces. They make them look cool. See, once again, it's coming out 
out in little shreds of wood. It's not going to come out all perfect when you're working with this small of a piece. And I'm looking for the place to meet. There you go. And pull it out from the back. And you can see from the back, they're pretty good. I'll do the D. I'll show you one more. I'm sure you don't want to watch me do the whole thing because I'll, do, I'll show other parts too. Now the D is kind of tr tr tricky too. We're going to of course do the inside edge first. Now that looks a little close. That's one of the things I'll probably move on the computer when I'm done. So I'm going to turn in just a little before my line ended. It's called artistic license. That's why right. sometimes I don't trust the computer drawings because when I draw it's like magnified 800 percent and it looks like it's a big area. And then actually when you're cutting it, it's not always. So, and that's not going to ruin the design any, having a little more breathing room there. So now I'm going to do this outside edge first because it's an inside curve with that curl. Now you can go back and come around from the other side if you want. And we're going to meet up very gently. I'm not hard to be pushing at all because I don't want to push too hard and pop it through. It's very light pressure, excuse me, and let the blade do the work. See, there's a good amount of room there. So I think that's a little better, and it'll still look nice when it's finished. And we'll go on to the O. See, it does go pretty fast. It's not like it's... But you don't want to zip through it too much. Now, of course, we're going to do the inside of the O first. nice like that and a lot of times you'll get a little bump and you don't want to lean too hard with the blade when there's just that little tiny bit of material holding on but see maple's pretty strong I mean that's quite thin and I could takes a lot to squeeze it to break it so it's why I like using tight grain wood like maple for this type of work and I'll finish up and do the next part we're back and we finished our letters without incident, which is good, because the P was tricky, but not bad. And I even got this little cute H that came out on its own. So, H for ha-ha. So the next thing we're going to do is a little flourish underneath, which is easy, but I thought I'd show it anyway. Because there are sometimes some little tricks to making it look nice. You see these a lot where people overcut and we don't want to do that. So how I do these is in two steps for each side. The hole is in the middle. Again the inside curved edge goes first. Again 
again, I'm going very slow. And stop right at the point. And then come back to the hole. And now I'll lean toward the other side. And it feels like my blade's getting kind of dull. So if it breaks, don't be surprised. I have to push pretty hard. And same thing here. I'm going to do the inside edge first. jump a little bit and if that happens like down here you'll see a bump so I want to try to get it I'm pushing a little bit harder as I get to see how it jumped there as I get to the edge because you don't want this little bump to be there so you go back and kind of lean on it and just kind of shave it and you try to get that jump in as deep as you possibly can now I don't want to try to back that out and make the wood jump out because that's how you kind of screw up pieces sometimes when that happens. If you're lucky enough for them to pop out all at once, it's great. So I'll show you from the back because it's easier to see. We're all done there. Um, the last thing, well the next thing we're doing is our star. And now the star has, we want the points on the star to be sharp. They're not curved edges on them. So I'm not going to be cutting this all in one one time either. I'm going to go from the middle and do each side individually. And what I do is I go to the, the plane, the point where I want to go, turn the piece so you're in the right direction, and very gently stop it right at the edge, back up, Come from the other side, do the same thing. So we're going to take out little diamonds. Very gently. And it's gone. This way your points won't be overcut. And very slow to the amount of space we're cutting. I was smart when I designed this. I only put one actual star in there, and the rest are all drill holes. And Keith made a night light where there were like 20 little stars in there. And they looked cool, but it took a while to cut, I'm sure. Or well, I didn't cut them. Just watch until it, you see the wood fall off. And now finally, the little hanger. And this is a good place to practice because usually there's um, ribbon or something through there and you don't see it anyway. And we'll do this like our normal of cutting. I want nice sharp corners, so I'm going to come right before the corner, turn into it. I don't know if you can see that with that reindeer antler in the way. And then it'll fall out. Now I'll do the straighter edge first. 
bring it right to the point where I want it to stop. And go back. nice clean sharp corner and our plaque is done.